cleaners, welcome to Chris's Rants from Solar Panel Clean Friends, a video series laser focused on exposing all the biggest myths and slip ups in the solar panel cleaning world. I'm your host, Chris Virgin, and if you've been around these parts for even more than a millisecond, you know I'm all about keeping things spotless, not just the panels, but the whole industry. Standards are the common language used by everyone involved in the technology and products. From the people designing the products to those manufacturing and distributing them, everyone who uses them relies on technology standards. Cleaners, in this video, we're discussing a topic that has been literally circulating in my head night and day for months now. I cannot seem to let the thought go. Standardization in the solar panel cleaning world. Have you heard the buzz? Do you hear it? You hear it right now? Listen, put your ear to the speaker. Could I clean it? Yeah, it's glass, right? But straight away in my head, I thought, if I go spraying water onto an electricity creating device with a carbon pole in my hand, it's gonna give me a hairstyle like this. Yes. You know? <laughs> Potentially that can do magical things to me. So I said, no thanks very much. Cleaners, should we have uniform cleaning standards across the solar panel cleaning industry? Does that sound like a good idea to you? On the surface, I guess it does. But here's the kicker to me. Who stands to benefit when these standards are set in stone? And could it be that standardization isn't all about safety, but more about corporate control? Anybody really surprised by this? This year, Apple's being forced to release their first USB-C iPhone when the iPhone 15 launches. The EU told them they have to do it, and they're expected to just include it worldwide. But they're gonna do it in the most Apple way possible. Reports are showing that they'll have special MFI cables or made for iPhone. And if you use a USB-C cable that's not MFI, then too bad, slow speeds and slow charging for you. The worst part is that they're not even going to make their phones faster. The iPhone 15 is expected to have the same USB 2.0 speed that the lightning phones have. So why does standardization matter to professional solar panel cleaners? Do you, do you really even care what I say? Well, it's simple. Having a clear set of rules could help reduce safety risk on the job. Electrocutions, falls, ladder accidents. We all know that solar panel comes with its own unique share of dangers. Standardizing the way we do things can make sure we're all on the same page, especially when it comes to maintaining the integrity of the job. Now, we can all get behind that. I'm behind that. I love that 100%. But there's another side to this that I think that we all just need to take a moment and we need to consider. What happens when corporate interests start pushing for standardized practices? But it turns out those practices are only good for their bottom line. Are we seeing a possible pattern where industry leaders are pushing for better standards, but they might just be only cashing in on the equipment they recommend? Are they trying to sell us their gear? Is that the whole point? Sounds a little like the doctors who sold Oxycontin as a miracle drug, doesn't it? Now, maybe it's just me. Research shows the more opioids doctors prescribe, the more money they make. According to an analysis by CNN and researchers at Harvard, opioid manufacturers are paying physicians huge sums of money. The ones who prescribe large amounts of opioids are the most likely to get paid. Researchers say it's not clear whether the payments encourage doctors to prescribe a company's drug or whether pharmaceutical companies seek out and reward doctors who are already high prescribers. I don't know. I saw a documentary about it recently. Let's break this down. There's no doubt that safety is crucial. And we can all agree that standardized safety protocols could make our jobs a hell of a lot safer. Now, whether it's using fall protection gear, electrical safety guidelines, harnesses, or even a possible insulation on a water-fed pole that mitigates the possibility of electrocution, having a universal standard could save lives. And I'm not against safety standards, not one bit. In fact, I am a huge fan of Steve Williams from ISCA, the International Solar Cleaners Academy. If you don't know, I recently spoke at the first solar panel cleaning convention that was put on by Steve in the International Solar Cleaners Academy. And let me tell you something. I remember my first job almost like it was yesterday because it was hellacious. It was a full week long. We had to clean 7,800 cardboard panels. That was my first job. I did not know what I was doing. And to make it even, I'll even throw it up a, a notch. While we're looking at all these amazing equipment 
and brushes and poles. When we first started, I had $500. Steve is constantly pushing for safety standards. And we need people like him. People like Michael Draper of Safety Experts. Mike Draper with Expert Safety Services. We're here with the Zero Pole showing the electrical uh, hazards and uh, how we can keep ourselves safe when we do have electrical hazards on a job site. All they want is to make sure we don't end up electrocuted or falling off roofs. I mean, this is a no brainer. Let me just go ahead and play devil's advocate just for one minute here. What if Steve Williams is pushing certain products, not just because they're the safest, but because he happens to sell them? You know, just like companies that push Oxycontin, and it turns out that they were all about their profits while people were suffering. Wouldn't that feel a little, well, disingenuous? If Steve's pushing a particular harness that he makes money off of, how objective is his advocacy? Now, I'm not saying Steve does this whatsoever, and like I said, I'm a big fan of him, so I'm not pointing fingers, but I'm merely just using this as an example, because it's a question worth asking. Am I right or am I wrong? all for having the right gear. I'm a gear nerd, but imagine if all the safety standards forced us to buy only certain brands or products. Now we're talking about a different game altogether. One where corporations dictate what we use and we're just, well, we're just their pawns. Could we really just trust the motivations behind all these safety standards if it's just a marketing play? Let's look at a real world example. California's ban on gas-powered landscaping equipment in 2019. The state forced landscapers to ditch their gas-powered tools and switch to electric ones. California is banning the sale of new gas leaf blowers. Governor Gavin Newsom signed a law banning the sale of new gas-powered off-road engines like leaf blowers and lawnmowers as soon as 2024. Now, the idea was to reduce emissions and to make everything greener. And it sounds great. Sounds amazing. Well, you fast forward a few years and what do we see? Landscapers are still struggling because the electric equipment just doesn't always cut it. It's not as powerful as gas tools. And a lot of small businesses can't afford to keep up with these new regulations. Take the electric Makita lawnmower. Bliss says it takes two batteries and can go about 3,000 square feet before a change or recharge. Well, a commercial landscaper probably, I mean, I could be way off on my numbers, but it's probably cutting, you know, 20,000, 30,000 square feet, maybe even more a day. So obviously they would have to be running around town with 100 batteries. So family owned businesses like Chevy Coopers simply does not see how it'll work. So only so much work will be able to get done in the day before we have to go back home and call it a day early to go charge our equipment. You go into any Home Depot in California and all you'll see are electric powered tools, no gas powered tools at all. And now I'm not even talking about just lawnmowers. We're talking about the full line, leaf blowers, trimmers, chainsaws, you name it. In some cases, they don't even carry regular plug-in equipment anymore. Why? Because it's been replaced by the electric stuff. It's a corporate push to force people into buying their products. And in doing so, small businesses are stuck with limited options. So why does any of this matter at all for any of you solar panel cleaners? Well, picture that there are big companies out there, like say a robot company and a solar manufacturer that collaborate together. And they start pushing for their own brand-specific cleaning tools and equipment as part of a standardization effort. All of a sudden, you're forced to use certain brushes or robots that just so happen to come from companies with deep pockets and huge agendas. What if these standardization efforts aren't really meant to be about safety or efficiency, but just about pushing specific products on us? And here's the fun part for me that I think that I, I just love the most is I, I wonder what happens if you have to use a specific brush for each panel type. So then you're forced to go ahead and collect a plethora of brush types that you need to just have on stack depending on your client and what solar panels they have installed. I don't know about you, but I'd rather not have my cleaning tools dictated to me by a corporate giant that doesn't even know the first thing about what's best for my job. How many times have I said it? Location dictates everything. What works for one cleaner in one part of the world may not necessarily work for another cleaner in the other part of the world. 
You could even say that there are different cleaning equipment and methods that are used by different cleaners within the same city bounds of each other. And of course, once all these standards are set in stone, you'll see the big players cash it in. And the little guys, the ones who don't have the capital to buy into the corporate game, they'll be left behind. It's like in the movies where the evil corporate overlord controls everything and the underdog has to fight back. Except in this case, the underdog is us, the solar panel cleaners. We don't need to be forced into any corner by a corporate back standards that only serve to line someone else's pockets. Cleaners, what do you think about this? Should we embrace standardization across the industry? Am I out of my mind? Or should we stay flexible, choosing what's best for each job, and avoid letting corporate interests dictate what tools we use, possibly to go as so far as to tell us what we should be charging our customers? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Let's have an honest conversation about it. And if you've ever been caught in a situation where corporate agendas mess with your cleaning gear, trust me, I want to hear all about it. In the end, I guess standardization for safety isn't a bad thing. I'm all for it. But if corporate interests start creeping in and pushing products for profit that's where we need to be cautious a thousand billion percent let's make sure that we the pros stay in control of our tools our methods and most importantly our business cleaners don't forget to hit that like button subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss our next episode chris's rants where we're always bringing you the latest updates and insights on keeping things clean safe and real in the solar panel cleaning world until then keep it clean keep it real and always remember when in doubt recognize analyze and resolve i thought you'd like that but hey if you don't subscribe i'll send a robot cleaner over to your house to do it for you it might just run out of battery halfway through so you might want to do it a favor and hit that button before i have to send it out have a good one we'll see you next time